Hey guys, welcome back to my channel where we spill tea left, right, and everywhere in between. Today's video is going to be a little bit more on Trisha Paytas and Moses Hawkman. Then we're going to be talking about Corinna Koff possibly being anti-vax and some other stuff about freaking the hype house. And <laughs> but before we get into it, make sure you subscribe to this channel, turn your post notifications on, and give this video a thumbs up. Also, make sure to check out the Hot Tea Twitter account for the latest news and to send us stories that you want us to cover. All right, let's get into this. So... <laughs> First things first, let's talk about someone changing Moses Hawkman, Trisha Paytas' husband's Wikipedia article to mention this. In September of 2020, Moses Hawkman was accused of sexually assaulting 22-year-old at the time, Daphne, last name unknown, who also went by Mrs. Mercury on Instagram. These allegations were later confirmed by Hawkman's verified ex-girlfriend when a post by username u slash catnips was found on the H3H3 production subreddit. Both alleged victims provided verifiable evidence of their relations with Hawkman by leaking personal text messages, direct messages, and images on the threads. Tweets posted by current wife Trisha Paytas were also found in which she can be quoted saying, he's as fake as you and you're dumb wife. Everyone hates you right now and for a reason. Y'all fake as fuck. At Moses Hawkman just wants to fuck y'all's fans. Bye. As a response to Ethan and Ela Klein from H3H3 Productions. I'm not gonna lie and maybe this is just me, but if anyone <laughs> tweeted this about me, I would never ever get close to this person ever again, let alone marry them. Like this is insane to me. Like how fucking crazy this girl is like she'll just like be so emotional that she'll just say absolutely anything and anything she'll say stuff that there's no going back from but clearly moses doesn't have standards either so i guess they're the perfect match because trisha can just do whatever the fuck she wants to them but whatever <laughs> one user commented i saw it once and mentioned a second wife on wiki and then it was changed i bet trisha watches it like a hawk Another user said, Moses has his own Wikipedia page. He's not even relevant or famous. It's kind of true. I mean, the only reason why people know him is because he's Ela's brother and now Trisha's husband. So like, I don't know why he has a freaking And page. on an unrelated but slightly related note, people have noticed that Ethan Klein liked these tweets from Trisha Paytas' ex-boyfriend, Sean Vanderwilt, saying, I saw a video someone made about me on YouTube and I really appreciate it and I appreciate all the messages and love and support. I I can't actually wait. Hashtag truth. I'm planning something and it is way overdue. Now, a lot of people are suspecting that Sean would possibly be going on the H3 podcast. That would low-key be so fucking funny. <laughs> Is it toxic of me for wanting that to happen so bad? One user commented, I'm just glad Ethan isn't letting Trisha silence him and is still finding ways to subliminally support the situation. And now let's talk about Corinna Kopf and people calling her anti-vax recently. She posted this on her Instagram story. Do I think COVID is a real thing? Yes. Do I think vaccines save lives? Yes. Do I think vaccines should be mandatory? Hell no. It should be your choice, don't twist my words. But a lot of people are now saying that she's anti-vax for some reason. I personally think that her story doesn't necessarily make her anti-vax. Do I agree with her? No, absolutely not. I think businesses should have a right to refuse customers who have a higher likelihood of carrying a f***ing virus, but anti-vax people are people who are actively against vaccinating and spreading false propaganda, and I don't think Corinna's doing that. One user said, jokes on whoever listens to her opinion. Vaccines aren't mandatory, but if you want to go to certain places that ask for proof, don't get upset. And I completely agree. Like, no one's f***ing forcing this on you. I mean, she didn't exactly promote the brightest content either. <laughs> I'm actually really curious to know what you guys think about this. Do you think Corinna went a little too far with this story? Like, yes, you can believe what she believes, but she has such a large audience that she shouldn't be spreading information like this. It's just unnecessary. Or do you just fucking think it's freedom of speech and it's her belief and she's allowed to say what she wants to say? I don't know. Comment your opinions in the comments down below. 
And moving on, let's talk about YouTuber Loray opening up about his recent mental health struggles and how it almost led him to quitting YouTube. He said he lost his passion and drive to post last year due to a variety of reasons from getting COVID and thinking he was going to die because he has asthma to his grandmother being sick, his breakup, and a couple more factors. He's super dramatic about this, but um, I've thought about quitting YouTube so many times, so many times. He actually ended up letting a lot of people into his life that he shouldn't have because he had lost his best friend and he was trying to fill that void. I would allow anybody in my life which turned into leading the worst people in my life. And at some point, he just felt like he was betraying his audience by not posting, but he ultimately decided to come back because of his fans who had saved him from his terrible thoughts. It's not about the money. It's mostly because it was against my moral code of just leaving y'all in a sense. Y'all technically saved my life. When all of that was happening at once, I honestly, <laughs> girl, I, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I said, is this giving 13 reasons why? Having people just check up on me in my DMs, just having people overall care about me, having those actual good friends. And at the time when I wanted to quit YouTube, I was struggling with depression, I didn't even know it. And what didn't help, obviously, was the fact that his family didn't really believe in mental illness, which is unfortunately the case with a lot of cultures. Like, my parents are also low-key like that. You could tell your parents that, Mom, I'm struggling with anxiety. She's like, get off that damn phone. <laughs> Mom, I have depression, her, because of that damn phone. I'm not even kidding. I didn't learn about depression until I got onto Twitter. And thankfully, he's doing much better mentally now and is happy that he didn't give up. Now thinking about it, I can finally say that I am very happy that I didn't give up because I really thought I was. I can say that I am doing mentally way better than I've ever been in my entire life. And lastly, I just wanted to talk about the co-founder of Hype House's new video reacting to the trailer of their Netflix show. In his latest YouTube video, he starts off with a heartfelt moment talking about how he used to not be able to afford Netflix and now he's going to be actually on Netflix. And he thanks his fans for helping him reach that point and also thanks Netflix for believing in him. As if anybody gives a fuck about him personally, but whatever, I digress. I think from the outside perspective, you would think that we are a bunch of spoiled little rich kids. I know that growing up, I started working when I was 12, 13 for my family, and you guys will get to see a little bit more of who I am throughout this show. People literally don't care. And I wasn't handed anything in life, and I had to work really hard to get to where I am. Good for you. He also talks about how action-packed and full of drama the show is going to be. Do you think tonight's gonna be fun? Knowing our friend group, there's gonna be some drama. <laughs> oh, is this show action-packed with drama? You'll see. Everyone thinks that he's so perfect, and I'm like, he's just a liar. We have a business to run. Chase just wants to reap the benefits without doing anything to help us make any money. Does people literally get canceled over this stuff? There is so much in this show that you guys will get to see that you would never see anywhere else. I need to know if Chase is even gonna be a part of this anymore. I don't really know where I stand right now. I don't want something that I've worked really hard towards to fade away. There's gonna be a lot of drama and a lot of tea and it's gonna be a new chapter in my life and I'm very excited. I don't know. What do you guys think about this show? I kind of don't hate it from the trailer, but that's low key because I enjoy watching trash TV, but I think that says a lot. When user said fake drama, Thomas is so cringy. I'm so sorry. Thomas is so cringe. I'm so sorry. Thomas is cringe. Thomas is so cringe. I'm sorry. Honestly, Trisha Paytas deserves a Netflix special more than these white rich kids. <laughs> And lastly, let's talk about Deaf Noodles, who tweeted about Jake Paul's latest boxing event bombing for only selling 65,000 pay-per-view copies. Now, for some reason, this figure does not mean anything to me, but apparently that's low. Jake Paul versus Tyron Woodley, two bombed on cable slash satellite PPV. Numbers are below November's AEW Full Gear, which did under 65,000 buys on terrestrial TV. Streaming numbers are unknown. And guys, this is just after he bought a $21 million mansion in Malibu. So one user pointed that out saying, well, damn, how are we gonna make payments on that $20 million mansion he just got? And some people were noting that digital wasn't added yet. So obviously a lot of people are going to be watching him from social media digitally. And so those numbers might be higher. Another person said, no one likes a rigged fight. They still gonna blame H3 for the loss in viewership. And yeah, that's pretty much it for today's video. I'm going to leave you guys with this video to take your mind off of that fucking Netflix trailer. <laughs> A dubious little creature getting up to mischief. This is no good. Oh, the beast is demonic. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I post new videos every single day. All right, bye-bye.